Wine to Five is partially funded by Al Borello Luxury Hand Soap, an unscented must-have accessory for anyone who loves wine, cooking, and food. For more information, visit albarellosoap.com. It's not five o'clock, and they don't care. Welcome to Wine to Five, entertainment, education, and everyday drinking for everyday people. Your hosts are Valerie Caruso and Stephanie Davis. Two wine educators who don't need a clock to know when to pour that next glass. Welcome to Wine to Five, episode 73, everybody. We are going south. No, not the podcast, or at least I don't think so, you know, (laughs) but south in the world of wine. Yes, today we are heading to New Zealand for a taste of some fun and interesting wines, and we're also going to bring you a taste of culture in the form of an interview with Celia Hay, owner of the New Zealand School of Food and Wine. Speaking of which, she did ask us to share some information about these bottles. She so generously shared with us, and we are happy to do so. Very happy. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I mean, somebody gives you a bottle and says, you know, here, taste these wines and talk about them. Oh, yeah. You know, it's rough when people hand you bottles and and then you're like, oh, this is hard work. I know, this This, job. This is a tough J-O-B. It is. It is. So in our glasses today are two wines from New Zealand's North Island. Bet you thought we had another Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc, didn't you? Nope. That's not what we have. But Steph has the white and the red in front of her, and Uh so do I. So you you want to talk about the white? Yes, let's go for it. All right. This is a 2014 Gisborne Albarino called Bell Ringer from Cooper's Creek. The wine region is Gisborne, and this is on the North Island, as Val just mentioned. Gisborne is more commonly known for its Chardonnay, but also has many other varieties like Pinot Gris, Gewurztraminer, Viognier, and this one, Albarino. You may recall this grape from the Spanish wine series that we did this past summer. Summer, and this one comes from a select plot of Cooper's Creek Vineyards considered super premium. This is about $19, $20. Yeah. So what do you think about the wine? Oh, yeah. Let me see here. Yeah. I think this is just juicy. and. Oh, know. yeah. Well, we were just saying this would have gone really nicely with our omelet with leeks and lardones oh, and a little green oh. salad on the side with yeah. a vinaigrette or something. Shout out Colorado Coffee Merchants for that awesome breakfast. A little cheese in there. and. Mm. Yeah, this is not too over the top in terms of acid. No, but it still has a nice zip. Yep, and it's got this juicy fruit gum thing going on. I, in fact, some of you may not be old enough to remember what that is, but I love it's juicy got, fruit, right? I mean, it's got that like stone fruit, peaches, nectarines, mm-hmm. and really, it's just it doesn't have the salinity that you would get from the Rio Spicious Albarino. But this is delicious. Yeah, I've never had an Albarino from New Zealand. No, I never have either. So this is a first for us too, and. $19 a bottle? Yeah. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Right. Well, now we're going to weave this week's factoid into our tasting that we're doing right now and the interview because there's just so much cool stuff about this area. So you're going to get all sorts of factoids. For example, Gisborne is not only the third largest wine producing area in New Zealand, but also is the first place the sunrise can be seen in the world and also the first place captain cook is believed to have made landfall how cool is that i know it's so cool i mean we're drinking from the first place the sunrise is in the world i know that is just so like mystical or something crazy i know i know so how's the uh red wine treating you val well let me switch glasses here because this here oh my gosh so this is really cool this is a 2013 Carmen Air. And what? I mean, what? I mean, it is from, from New Re- Zealand. From New Zealand. And it is, it is a lot about New Zealand that we don't know that we're going to explore in the next two episodes. But this one is from Ransom Wines. And it is in the very small Matakana region of New Zealand's North Island. This is about an hour north of Auckland. So you may remember Carmen Air as one of the original blending grapes of Bordeaux, or perhaps now as the signature grape of Chile, which we tasted with Sharon yeah. McCarthy back in episode 51, The Devil in the Cellar. That sexy episode. 
Yeah. And people learned a lot of factoids in that one, too. That was sexy. I mean, and this wine is, too. This Ransom Winery is considered a must-visit winery if you go to the North Island. Very, very small region. But this particular winery has been producing these classic styles since their first 1996 vintage. Cool. Okay. And this is about a $22 bottle in U.S. dollars. And we had to convert it from about 30 to 39 in New Zealand dollars. Okay. So that's about what it amounts to. But this one is, what do you think is... You know, this one is ready to drink now. It's smooth. You can appreciate mm. all the black fruits. There's some gorgeous color. You see that staining a little bit? Oh, yeah. And it's got these really nice, it's like the finish that comes back. Mm-hmm. Blackberry, and it's just cocoa powder. And it's really, really nice. And it is unfiltered, which, you know, we like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's unadulterated. A little more flavor, a little more roundness in the mouthfeel, and it's just a beautiful 100% Carbonara wine. So, should we get to our guest interview while we sip these? Bring it. Oh, my God. So, today, listeners, we are talking with Celia Hay, and she is the owner of the New Zealand School of Food and Wine, and we got to catch up with her at wine camp. But she has this great love for delicious food, fine wine, and the art of hospitality. And this is what led her to establish the original Hayes restaurant in 1994 and the New Zealand School of Food and Wine in 1995, which is in Christchurch, New Zealand. So she uses organic lamb sourced from her family farm in Pigeon Bay, Banks Peninsula. And she was also able to carve out a unique dining experience at Hayes. So both businesses flourished and Celia went on to establish the Duval Shell Store and Cafe located in Akaroa Harbor and Celia's Pies, a concept for healthy pies featuring organic pigeon bay lamb and lower fat pastry Hmm. with this wine come on seriously right on february 22nd 2011 unfortunately a series of devastating earthquakes had struck christ church forcing the closure of hayes restaurant and the relocation of the new zealand school of food and wine to auckland today the new zealand school of food and wine offers fully equipped modern demonstration and practical kitchens dining rooms cocktail bars wine tastings and barista training rooms seminars and reception areas a specialist in culinary, wine, and hospitality education, the New Zealand School of Food and Wine has trained thousands of students. Many have gone on to enjoy success as respected chefs, food writers, sommeliers, and restaurant owners. Celia is a qualified chef and holds the WSET Diploma of Wine and Spirit. She has a Bachelor of Arts in History, Master of Education, and an MBA from Canterbury University. Celia's book, How to Grow Your Hospitality Business, A Guide for Owners and Managers, provides invaluable advice to hospitality students and people wishing to establish their own cafe, restaurant, or catering business. In 2014, Celia published The New Zealand Wine Guide, which was awarded the Gourmand World Book Awards Best in the World for wine and tourism. Celia has three children and regularly travels south to the farm in Pigeon Bay. Now, whew, on to the interview while we sip these gorgeous wines, and we hope you enjoy this chat with Celia as much as we did. Welcome, Celia. Thanks for being here for the Wine 2 Five show. When did your journey with the food and wine world begin, Celia? A long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? My father was the mayor of our city the mayor of Christchurch, and he was the mayor for 15 years. And so my parents entertained a lot, and they would entertain important people, and I used to have to be the waitress (laughs) at the dining room table. So I was always interested in this entertaining, and I always enjoyed setting the table and making it look beautiful and all those fine back-end things that people take for granted was something that I always enjoyed as a, as a teenager. And um, I have one memory of where we had in New Zealand someone called the Governor General who's the, the Queen's representative in New Zealand and, and he came to my parents' home for dinner with his wife and he was giving me tips on wine service. Oh my goodness. Pour from the right, he said. Yeah. And guess what we were drinking? Blue Nun. <laughs> <laughs> It was all the rage. It yeah. was all the rage, and it was yeah. the height of sophistication even in New Zealand. Oh, I did not know that. that so cool. so always I've been interested, and I've always been interested in food, and especially from the French tradition. You know, I've always thought yes. France has always been a place of enormous interest to me as a teenager. So, I, you know, with the food comes the wine, with the wine comes 
restaurants and travel and so really my career has been quite quite a different sort of career because even though I'm a history graduate so I went to university did history but always was fiddling around with food and as of today too people aren't encouraged to go into hospitality so back then you know I was coming from an upper middle class home no one ever said to me go and you know run a restaurant I just fell into it in a sort of strange and curious way yeah well, that explains a little bit about how your love evolved over time it's all because when you were a kid <laughs> your parents were making you perform waitress duties that's right but also introducing fine food yes you know, and yes. you weren't just serving you know chicken fingers no, no, no. Okay, no, no. I was kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you are an author, an educator. I'm curious, what is your favorite subject to teach and to write about? I've actually written three books. My wow. first book was on is a well is on a hospitality management book, a book for growing. I called it How to Grow Your Hospitality Business, which I first wrote in 2000, and it was really based on my experience setting up cafes and restaurants because in New Zealand at that time really there was no advice and I knew that the lessons I had learned were very relevant for other people and it was also formed the basis of one of our, our restaurant and cafe management courses and, and in doing and preparing that book I was able to travel to the States a few times and I did a new edition in 2006 following a trip, you know, two trips to the States and studying the art of the restaurateur and learning myself what was involved and then part of that is that pathway of course into more knowledge about wine okay so I I am a trained chef too so I really was doing the cooking side but as the New Zealand wine industry started to grow and expand and I could see that there were not many people who were very knowledgeable about wine or wine as as educators right so again I established my school the New Zealand School of Food and Wine in 1994 and soon realized that I should start teaching more about wine and originally used uh, people experts to come in and teach for me but then over time I realized well I needed to step up and learn all this uh, information for myself okay so I've gone on and done the WSET different levels and the diploma so again primarily as a self-study because there wasn't right. anything available in New Zealand so right. So I remember sitting exams and thinking, my goodness, I have no idea what that word is. Yeah. Like bugger. Oh. In Portugal. <laughs> you know, grape in Portugal. Or, yeah. You know, so, in, you know, and I, it's just, there were whole parts of the book when I did it in 2003 that, you know, I just really had had no idea. So I've been able to, with my school, we offer a 12-week professional wine course, which includes a whole lot of different wine programs. So it's quite a different way of learning from what you're experiencing here, right. because people sign up and come for 12 weeks full-time from 9 to 2.30. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah, that's we, we, great. We've had quite a few Americans, I was going to say, yeah. had I known about that, that would have been something during my travels and wine school hopping around the world, I would have loved to have have found, you know. I mean, that's great. 12 weeks in New Zealand, listeners. 12 yeah. weeks in well, New Zealand. Is that is wine then your favorite topic to, to teach? I mean, is it is no, preferred no, over culinary? No, I like it all. Yeah. <laughs> like it all. When, you, when you like both, pick both. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and it's just, you know, I, I've just literally last week I had to do a cooking demonstration and I haven't been doing so much of it. But, you know, that is really my first strength, but also the management side. You know, so helping people well, I, we run a program for business startups to help people get oh. into into the hospitality business. Yeah. And, and I'm again in my spare time, I'm doing a new edition of that book. Okay. So, so for me, I've just been to New York, dined at Eleven Madison Park, you know, and just looking. I'm always looking to see what's the best experience and how I can translate that and help other people to see that even though they mightn't be able to have that opportunity themselves. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm very current. Okay. So that's always good, is to stay current. Yes. Yes. Well, so since you've done so many things, it sounds like, and written a few books, and you've had a restaurant, and if hindsight is twenty twenty, is there anything that you would have done differently? I've had restaurants, and I've had cafes, too. And then in 2010, we had a series of earthquakes in Christchurch, New mm-hmm. Zealand. So my first... Uh, so we had a... First earthquake in September 2010, which was quite a major one. And then 
And we all thought that that was the end of it. But yeah. then six months later, we had a devastating earthquake where people were killed, yeah. you know. And in my restaurant was uh, just, you know, it wasn't leveled, but it was just inoperable. So, mm. so I had my restaurant on the ground floor of our building opposite the Christchurch Casino, and I had the School of Food and Wine on the top two floors. Okay. And so I realised at that time that, well, we all thought we could get back into the city within a month or two months, but really it's been nearly five years. Oh, my gosh. And I made the decision, because I've got two teenage sons who were sort of six, 15, 16 at the time, and I knew that it was so important for them to go to, to be settled because they were really at that time where they're doing important exams at high school, and they were at a private school. And I said to them, well, I've got no money, I've got no income, mm -hmm. so you're going to have to leave the school. Oh, wow. And so, and, and our, our home in the city was destroyed too. So I just said, well, I think we might go to Auckland, you know, which is the biggest city, and you can go to a, a, a boys' school up there called Auckland Grammar, which is, there's no fees, we can rent a house in the area, and I can re-establish my school in the Auckland market because there was nothing like it. Okay. So that's what we did. Okay. But also, that was also around the time that the global financial crisis was really starting to bite. So in New Zealand, there was quite a decline in international tourists. It became quite a tricky time. So things like my cafe, my cafe, which I had in the countryside outside of Christchurch, became a very difficult, difficult financially. So, you know, I was nearly having to, you know, needing to make those decisions as to whether to liquidate it, to sell it, you know. So, so it was a situation where it was a great idea, mm -hmm. you know, in 2007, but turned into a real financial nightmare by 2011, 12. Okay. So what are the lessons from that is something I ask myself quite often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and again, I think from a business strategy point of view, there were many things that were out of my control, but one of the things that was in my control was that I was able to, my, my two sons and I've got a daughter as well, I was able to get them, they helped a lot in that business. Yeah. And so my two sons now who are both doing engineering, they both had this big hospitality training from, you know, from age 11, making coffees, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, serving food, pouring wine. So, so they're very much involved in the business as well, even though they're studying engineering. That will serve them well yeah. with the ladies in the future. That's well. Yeah. well. <laughs> and, and it helps them with their customer service skills yeah. too. Yeah. So so while there was a it was a strange and difficult situation, there were some positive sides. Yeah. And there were also lots of you know, from again from a business startup for me advising people on their on what you know, how to go about setting up a, a cafe or a right. restaurant. Yeah. There are many lessons in that which will be reflected in this new version of my book. All right. And then what do you want our listeners to know about the New Zealand School of Food and Wine? I think um, one of the things that I'm keen to uh, let people know is that the, the New Zealand wine industry is very vibrant, the food industry as well, and that really, you know, from, from LA, it's an 11-hour flight to Auckland. Right. You know, you should all come on holiday. Oh, we're planning to in 2017, actually. <laughs> well, I think that we just need to spread this word. But it's not just about bungee jumping. Right. You know, I think, I don't know, New Zealand is um, getting... Um, <laughs> it has a, you know, people think that there's an outdoors experience. And then they come to New Zealand and they're very surprised mm -hmm. by the quality of the wine and the cuisine. Right. And, and the other thing that I think people should think about is that you just don't have to come once. You know, so that if you're interested in wine, your people are interested in learning about the different wine regions, that it's a real compromise to come for a week mm -hmm. and try and cover the whole of New Zealand. It's still the same size as California. Right. You know, and the regions are quite disparate. So right. that you know, it would be good to come and do maybe the you know, certain aspects and then think, well, I can come again in a few years' time. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just not... like going to Italy or anything else. I mean, you can't do it justice if you try and spend one, one week, week in Italy. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, just, that's right, specialize. Yeah, and, yeah. And so I th also at my school we're running programs. We do a three-day New Zealand wine course, which may oh. be of interest yeah. for, you know, if we can get a group together to come, you know, do learn about white wines, red wines, and other sparkling wines and sweet wines, of which we do a lot. Right. And then we also do a trip to Waikiki Island, which is a uh, 45 minutes from Auckland okay. downtown. And, so. and that is a wine I've never had before, and you just happen to have one right here. 
Is that a Carmenere? Yeah, I think I think it's is it that the one or yes. is it the Bordeaux blend? No, the Carmenere okay. is um, from you know well the grape is coming from uh, Chile. Matacana. Matacana is the region, this yeah. little subregion north of Auckland. Okay. And then um, where is that Bordeaux blend from? Just that, the, um, this is from, the Bordeaux blend is from Waikiki Island. Oh, okay, yeah. That's, okay. Yeah, and, and Waikiki Island is just a fabulous place, and, you know, for people, even if people are on a short time frame and they come into Auckland, they can get on the ferry right. and go there for the day. And I also had at my tasting Man of War, which mm-hmm. is a really top which vineyard is, yes. from Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc. but Blanc. also, Blanc. well, the, the, that's from Waikiki Island. Oh, that one was too? Yes. So oh, I was, I, we had a Pinot Noir from Marlborough. Oh, okay. Yes. I knew there was something on your table from Marlborough. Yeah. Yeah. And Marlborough is an interesting region, but it's quite hard to get to. Yeah. So you need to like fly from Auckland to the town of Blenheim. But once you're there, you can then drive, and it's very picturesque to drive down to Christchurch and onto Queenstown. Okay. What's the best time to come visit? The high season is from December through to the end of March. So. If you want to be there when everyone else is there, then come at that time. But everything's more expensive. Oh, okay. it's, it's better to come in the shoulder, like April, which is vintage time mm-hmm. in New Zealand, or September is a good time. We're September, thinking of November. like November. Yeah. yeah, September, October, November is a good time. Yes. And you know, Air New Zealand is becoming is very entrepreneurial, and they've got this direct flight out of Houston. Oh, um, which is. One way it's uh, 12 hours, the other way it's 14 hours because yes. of the winds. But yes. it's making making it at this side of the US much easier to get to, and um, so they've got they've got deals, you know. So yeah. people need to just you know sign up to their newsletter. I mean, I literally got a deal this morning, which was a $500 flight to what? Hong Kong, you know, which is you know just that's ridiculous. I know it is. It costs me more to get to DC. So, <laughs> so yes. So you should have a look at Air New Zealand. It's a really great airline, you know, in terms of. Oh, we are. We we wouldn't yeah. fly. I don't think we'd fly a domestic airline. But listeners, if you want to go to New Zealand in November seventeen, just start piping up and check out our speak pipe and let us know. We will put a tour together. Yes, and yes. and coming up though this September, tell us about the event, the New Zealand Food and Wine Celebration. Yes, we have an annual event, and maybe you know something that would be better to come to. Yeah, you know, because then you'll see each year we have about twenty five New Zealand wineries presenting different wines. They're all interesting, quirky wineries offering um, boutique wines that you often don't see easily. And then we'll have a have a themed wine this year. Our, wine presentation is from Spain, so we've got some Spanish mm-hmm. wines. But we also do cookery classes oh, okay. at, at our school, so we'll have a hands-on. We've got a, um, a chef coming from, a Spanish chef coming who's doing a tapas demonstration and then followed by a dinner. We, we're doing an American barbecue session. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Um, With Bobby Flay, maybe? N- no. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and we've got a famous Australian uh, TV chef, his name's Lindy Milan. She's coming okay. to do some, you know, fast and fabulous cooking. Uh, we also do something called an urban hungi, which is where we uh, hungi is the traditional New Zealand um, method of cooking food in the ground. H u n g y. H a n g i. H a n g i. Hungi. And okay. we um, and they've developed a, a basically a steaming rather than doing it in the ground. Something for people can, to do at home, which is more practical, which is a steamed version of it. So we'll be doing some workshops on how to steam your own food. I think well, that well, leads into the next question, right? Because I saw, I think, pictures of that method on your Facebook. Is oh, that yes. right? Yes, you did. Okay. So how can people find you? Well, we have a, a big Facebook page, so foodandwine.co.nz. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll link it up to yeah, you in the show notes. Yeah, and um, and... You know, our website, obviously. So people generally are just getting access to us through through the web. Okay. And what about accessing you? Um, Twitter? Twitter? Uh, Twitter. Instagram? Yeah, yeah, Twitter, Instagram, and New Zealand uh, School of Food and Wine. Wine. New Zealand School of Food and Wine on Instagram. Okay. And, but also, I suppose the, the Facebook page, I'm always po- I'm the po- person posting. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Yeah. 
It might have looked directly like me, but it is. Okay, great. So, listeners, there's a whole hashtag one, two, five challenge thing that you guys can do in New Zealand uh, yeah. in September. You could just knock them all out for the year. Well, Celia, we have to ask you, we ask all of our guests about silly wine stories. We all have them. You've been in the wine and food business a long time. We are most sure that you have a funny story that you can share with our listeners, just to keep it real. You know, we're all yeah. serious about food and wine here, but every once in a while, funny things happen. What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you? So, um, if, quite a few years ago, when Oliver, my eldest son, was about 11, uh, he was helping me out at the restaurant at about 7.30 at night, and there was a table of Americans sitting over in the corner, and I asked him to take over their bill. Uh, the either so they were coming to the end of their service. So he took it over in a wallet, and and then one of the Americans started engaging with him and asking him some questions about what he was doing and the tourism questions, and, and Oliver responded very well. And then, then, then the man opened the wallet. Inside he put in a $50 note, and he said, this is for you, son. And um, so it was a tip for Oliver. So Oliver brought it over to me, and he said, what is, what is this? <laughs> not knowing about this tipping culture, and I said, yeah. "Well, Oliver, this is this is a reward and an incentive for you to start thinking about, you know, if you engage with people, that there's a future. This man, he wants you to be incentivized, and um, and he's he's just giving you that reward like that. Yeah. And um, and what happened is Oliver was just he was he was. Fascinated about it, but it was a very, it was a life changing event <laughs> for him. How cute! Because he suddenly realized that there's more than just handing out a, a, handing a bill to a customer. But following that, my other son, he, he could see that Oliver had made some financial gain out of this. <laughs> so he then started chatting to customers more, too. <laughs> Cute. Oh my gosh, so tipping is not common policy in New Zealand. No, it's not. No, oh, okay, like no. it is in many places in the world, and I don't think many Americans realize that. Mm. It's totally normal for them to do that, so when you go someplace where there's no tipping, you know, some of us are, whoops, and that was dishes breaking. <laughs> um, most of us are relieved yes. by that, yes. but it's still hard to not reward yes. great service. Yes. And so, yes, your son's got to experience that. Celia. Celia, yes, We've thank you. We've all got planes to catch and things to do, but um, I hope you have a safe trip back to New Zealand, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Yes, well, it'll be nice to meet you both, and all the very best. Likewise. Yes. yes. Well, that was a fun impromptu interview with Celia at the Society of Wine Educators Conference, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, we it was unexpected. We didn't know we would meet her, and we went out and dined with her. And spent a lot of time getting to know her. And, yeah, now we're bringing her to the Wine to Five community. So this, this was so fun to create a whole show around meeting such a dynamic lady. It was. And you can see her face light up when she talks about cooking, especially in French food. Oh, yeah. And I like how she says cookery. Cookery. Uh, <laughs> she's just lovely. I mean, she's just such an interesting person. We had such a good time chatting with her. And as a reminder... To all our dedicated listeners, the New Zealand School of Food and Wine event is happening at Celia School this September 10th through 12th, 2016. And so if you just happen to be in New Zealand or on your way there, on your way there, pop in and say hi to Celia. I'm sure she'd appreciate it. Yeah, and let's give one more shout out. Thank you, Celia, and thank you, the New Zealand wineries Cooper's Creek and Ransom Wines, that you have created some beautiful wines for our drinking pleasure oh today gosh, yes. and I know other people's drinking enjoyment. So, for sure. And I believe that brings us to the end of this episode. So please stay tuned for part two of our New Zealand Wine Stories series. New Zealand Wine Series. You can connect with me, Val, on Twitter at WineGalUnboxed and on the Vino with Val Facebook page and on Instagram as Vino with Val. Steph here, you can find her on Twitter at Alborello Soap and on the Alborello Soap Facebook page. Check out her videos also on the Alborello YouTube channel. And please vid- visit us on our website, winetwofive.com. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Google+. Also, if you want to build your collection of wine books and other goodies, please check out our online store. That is also on the website. So, 
We hope that you'll share our Wine 25 experience with your friends and everybody you know. We certainly appreciate all of your involvement and feedback, especially burning wine questions yeah. and iTunes reviews. Any love, we love it. So thank you so much. And uh, one more thing. Yeah. Don't forget to use the hashtag W25Challenge when you're trying new wines like New Zealand wines Mm -hmm. and any other fun drinks. So until next week, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the Wine to 5 podcast. Be sure to check us out at Facebook slash Wine TWO 5. And tune in next week for more fun and useful sip tips.